Hi and welcome to another session from Blender Insight. This time in the future or next version of Blender version 2.81. So if you don't have version 2.81, go to the experimental build site and download it so you have 2.81. And as soon as you start it, change render engine into cycles because I'm going to show you some new nodes that will be in 2.81 and some of those nodes are not supported by Eevee. So change render engine into cycles. Okay, as you can see, I have not deleted the default cube. No, I have added a lot of friends to it. And the reason for that is that one of the new nodes that I'm going to present for you is a random node and if you're going to play with random colors and so on then it's good to have friends so i start with adding that one and it's a texture and it's called white noise so i press shift a go to texture and here i will find white noise and before i continue i will explain how it works you get an input value here and you get another output value the output value is in the range of 0 to 1, so any number between 0 to 1 is what is presented here. But if you use the same input number twice, you will get the same output. So it's always depending on the input here. You have different types of dimension. So you have one dimension, which is just an input value, uh, like a seed value in for random number. Then you have the two and three dimensions, which are like two dimension is for the axis X and Y. The three dimension is for all the axes, so it's X, Y and Z. And the fourth dimension, that is uh, all the axes and an input value. So by combining all these, you can get a value out. But since the value out is between 0 to 1, I would like to have some way to transform it into colors. So I will use wavelength in this case. So I press Shift A again, go to Converter, and there you will find wavelength at the bottom. So you just take it up and you put it into the color here and everything will be green because every one of these cubes have the same material. To make it a little bit flexible and to be able to use white noise texture, I need some math. So I put in two math nodes, so I press Shift A again and go to Converter and here I will find my first math node. And I will just duplicate it, so I press Shift D and then drag it out here. And now I change Add to Multiply on the first one. And I change the bottom value into uh, 300 and I change this bottom value into 400. And then I just connect uh, the white noise to the multiply and the multiply to the add and the add to the wavelength and I got the color here. I got the same color all over because we're using the same output value because we're using the same material for all the cubes. If I now change the input value here you can see that the color is changing randomly and yeah, I can use uh, as high a number as I want to and as low numbers I want to, the output will always be between 0 to 1. And I can also use negative numbers, as you can see. Okay, uh, to have different uh, values here or different colors, you are used to another random value. And I will show you that one as well, so we can combine those later on. So I press Shift A, and this time I go to Input, and in Input you will find something called Object Info. So I go to Object Info, and I find it's here. And if I take away white noise texture, and instead put in random here, you can see I get random numbers. So do I need two? One of the things you can do is, uh, if I work with uh, Object Info random, I only get one output random. And often I have a problem with that because I would like to change a lot of things. I would like to change uh, color, uh, the scale, the roughness, and so on. Uh, so it's really feeling like you have a new material on each object. And it's hard to achieve that using only one random number. 
So we can use white noise texture as a help for that. So if I take the random here and use that as an input and then use the white noise texture out here, then you can see I get a completely new set of random numbers. So that means that I have at least two uh, ways to create random numbers now. I can use the random into white noise or I can use the random directly. And as you can see now, it's like uh, yellow, dark blue and, and some other blue here. But if I now use this, it's a red, purple and orange. Then you can use the three dimension and use the location instead. And if you use the location, you get another set of colors here. So then you get green, blue and orange instead. So now we have like three sets that you can play with inside the same object. Then you have a fourth dimension. And in the fourth dimension, you can put in uh, another value, as you can see. So why not use the random into the fourth dimension? And then you get a fourth set of numbers that you can use for each object. So now you can have one random number for scale, another random number for, for um, color, and so on because you can now mix the random with the white noise texture. But you can do a lot more. White noise texture is, as it said, in its most basic shape, just white noise. That means that if you put in uh, something that is changing here in any axis or in any input value here, it will change the output, as you can see. You get different colors each time I touches or changes these values. So if I put in an uh, input map using like texture corner, so I press shift A, input texture corner and put that in here and use object for instance, I get what is called white noise. You can see now it's just a clear noise here. And even if I change thing, it's hard to see that I have a lot of uh, useful things to do with this. So what I can do then is go to another new addition to Blender 2.81 and that is an enhanced uh, vector math. So I go to Shift A and go to Converter and here I have vector math. And as soon as I pick that up, you can see that the look and feeling of the new vector math is a little bit different. Now you can clearly see the input. You have X, Y, Z and you have X, Y, Z. And it's also dynamic, meaning if you use some of these functionalities, like the dot product, uh, you get a value out here instead of, uh, instead of a vector output. And if you use something that only have one input, like normalize, then you only have one uh, set here instead of two sets which make it much easier to work with because now you, uh, you know uh, which input you will have and which output. And it works the same in, uh, in the math. So if you change math to, I don't know, like uh, absolute or something like that, then you say you only have one uh, input instead of two. So all these things, math and the vector math, are dynamic in the user interface. I would take back this to add now. And what I also have here, and that is a huge change, is a lot of more functionality in the vector math. So I have project, reflect, distance, length, scale, snap, floor, ceiling, modular, a lot of things. And that makes my life a lot easier. And when you come to uh, creating uh, something on uh, using the white noise texture, we can use a new functionality here called Snap. Snap is uh, working in, yeah, you can say easily uh, explain. I can say that you, if you use the top map here, you try to squeeze the top map in or snap the top map into the bottom map here. So what we will do is to create uh, bigger areas here so we can see each little dot in a better way. And that we do by combining, uh, we take the snap in here, 
to the white noise texture. And right now you can see, okay, we don't have any noise, but we only have one single color. Well, if we change this into a value, then we can get press here so we can have 0 0.1, we can have 0 0.1, we have 0 0.1. Then we get these squares. And that is because we now divide object into uh, 0 0.1 scales. So it's like having like a modular uh, for X, Y, Z inside here. So if I increase this, I get uh, bigger squares. And if I increase it more, I of course get even bigger squares. So now I can get random numbers here. But as you can see, uh, they are of course random inside the object, but they are exactly the same between the objects. So now since we have the white noise texture, we can also add a fourth value here to change things. And I used the object info before and we can use that now as well. So I can just use the random input here and put it in here. And then you get a random number on each of these. So in that way, you can, of course, change it. And so another thing you can do, if I go back to like one dimension here, and I put in a texture here, and in the first, I will use, uh, I will use gradient texture because that is fun. So I take Shift A, and I take texture, and I put in a gradient texture here. And I take the factor out here into this, and now you can see it's only noise all over the place and uh, that is not so fun but if i now use the snap functionality that i had before i can just connect that and now i have a gradient a line, linear gradient and if i have a little less here i got get more lines of course but uh, to have it more nice you can change this to like uh, spherical and if you do spherical you have a nice flower here. You can make it bigger and change it a little bit by changing uh, the things here as well. And now you have those on different places and so on, but it's still the same here. So you would like to have different colors here. Well, easily just change this to four dimension. And now you can use object info again, but the location. And now you get different types here. Now I got everything. Okay, so uh, you don't need snap to do stuff with white noise texture. Another thing you can do is put in like um, ambient occlusion, for instance. So if I press Shift A, input ambient occlusion, and put that into here, you can see now that you get nice uh, reflections on those cubes that are affecting each other using the ambient occlusion. And you can of course change things here to make it look pretty nice. And uh, you can have the same color all over if you want to, or use the randomized thing here. And that is also very nice that you can use <coughs> one thing to affect another one to randomize things or like this. And uh, you can also use, of course, uh, like that if you want to, that you use uh, only local and you use inside and you can even get it to be like on the, on the edges like this. So you can do a lot of stuff with the ambient occlusion. You can do other st uh, fun stuff as well, like uh, you can press Shift A and you can use uh, like input of layer weight if you want to. Uh, take the Fresnel in here and if I now go up here you can see that the Fresnel starts in the center and then it spreads out like this. But now we get so very thin lines here so it doesn't look so nice. So it's time to introduce you to another new thing in 2.81 and that is a map range. So I press Shift A again go to converter and here I will find map range here I have the map range and I will put that in and you can see no difference but what it does is that it take the value you get from here and you change that value into this 
And from this here, I get value from 0 to 1. But I can say that uh, everything that is 0 up to something will be the minimum value 0 0.4 instead. And the maximum will not be 1. It will only be like 0 0.5. So we only have now 0.1 as a difference instead of that big difference here. And suddenly you can see all these lines uh, appear here. And I can of course do the range even smaller if I want to, to make it wider. So a uh, map range you can use for a lot of transformation where you have some input value that goes from one thing to another thing and then you would like to have another output like this. And by that you can then change things and make it pretty and nice. So that is also something new uh, in uh, this uh, 2.81. Bye!